Okay, in this video I want to talk about finding volumes of revolution using uh, the cylindrical shells method. And the function I'm going to use here is y equals negative x squared plus x, which is just a parabola opening downwards. The line y equals 0, which is just the x-axis, so we're going to get the region here that I kind of have lightly shaded in blue. And um, I went ahead and graphed this parabola, and again you could find the x-intercepts by simply setting this equal to 0 negative x squared plus x equals zero. You could factor out the x and have negative x plus one left over. Um, and then if we solve each one of these pieces uh, individually, we'll get x equals zero and then x equals one as our solutions. So that's where it's hitting the x-axis. And the formula I like to think about when I use shells is <clears throat> I think about it being 2 pi times the shell radius and the shell height. And if we go about a vertical line, when you do shells, if you go about a line up and down, you're always going to integrate with respect to x. So when I draw a little shell, all I do just inside of my region, just any old place, I just draw a little shell that's parallel to the line I'm going about. And in this case, I'm out some distance x. So to set up this integral, it's going to be 2 pi. You can factor that part out front. Um, the limits of integration, it goes from an x-coordinate of 0 to an x-coordinate of 1. Those are going to be um, your limits of integration, because that's where the region starts and stops. Starts and stops. The shell radius is just the distance from my shell to the line I'm going about. So if I'm rotating about the y-axis, the shell radius in this case would simply be x. So I'll just take x and then multiply that by the shell height. Well, the shell height's like finding areas, and you just take the top curve, subtract away the bottom curve, and that'll give you the shell height. So the shell height in this case will be negative x squared plus x dx, and we now have the setup to find our, um, our volume using shells. So if I was actually going to calculate this out, I would probably pull, um, well, probably wouldn't pull anything else out just yet. Just distribute the x, make it negative x cubed plus x squared, I'm already integrating, plus x squared dx, and then when you had to integrate that, just use the normal power rule. So it says you would get, so after you integrate, you'll get 2 pi negative x to the fourth over four plus x to the third over three. My pen's starting to die on me here. From zero to one, when you plug these values in, you'll simply get two pi. You'll get negative one fourth plus one third when we plug in um, the one. When we plug in the zero, we'll get a zero plus zero. So that'll be our um, value. If we get common denominators, multiply top and bottom by 3 to get negative 3 twelfths, multiply top and bottom by 4 to get 4 twelfths, we would have negative 3 plus positive 4 or 1 twelfths. So if we distribute that out, the 2 over 12 will simply leave us with pi over 6 as our volume in this case. Um, just one little thing too, just maybe a slight variation on this problem. Suppose we wanted to, instead of going about the y-axis, suppose we wanted to go about the line x equals negative 2. Or let's even make it x equals negative 3. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so the same region, but now about the line x equals negative 3. Well, okay, so not the scale here, but just so I can squeeze it in. Suppose this is the line x equals negative 3, and now we're rotating about that. Everything's still the same. Um, we still use the formula 2 pi, the shell radius, and the shell height, dx. Our limits of integration are still going to be from 0 to 1, because that's the, where the region starts, and wh that's where the region stops. The shell height is still the same. It's the top function minus the bottom function. But the only thing that's changed now is the shell radius. So right now I'm at some distance x. Well, again, the distance just to get back to the y-axis would be x. And then I would have to go another positive 3 units to get over here to the line y equals negative 3. 
So this entire length is what's going to be the shell radius. And in this case, the shell radius would be x. And then we would have to add another 3 units, so x plus 3. Don't be thrown off by the fact that it's negative 3. Again, think about this as in, in terms of distances. Negative 3 is 3 units away, plus another x units. That'll be our shell radius. And again, this other part will be the shell height. If you wanted to integrate this, you would have to just foil everything out and then use the basic power rule again.